another week, another central control tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at how you can use NewTek USB controllers like this to control vMix. Okay, so for this to work, you're going to need to make sure you have the VCOM driver installed. The easiest way to do that is to make sure that when you install central control, you check this install serial driver box here. If you haven't done that when you installed it, just run the installer again and it'll be fine. Now that we've done that, we can add the device to our project. So once again, I'll start with a blank project and I'll come and first we'll add the live control LC11 or whatever model you're using. Once that's added, I'm going to go to the device parameters and I'm going to select the COM port. You might have multiple and it might take a little bit of trial and error to figure out which one is the right one. Once you enable it, you should see the startup animation on the device. That's probably the best light show I've programmed all year. If it doesn't, there's probably something else using the port or you're trying to use the wrong COM port. Let's add vMix to our project. So now I've got vMix in the project, I'm just going to type my IP address and enable that. Now we've done that, we can start mapping the controls. So I want to have this set up, so I'm going to have my preview row on the preview row, would you believe, uh, program on the program row. Uh, we'll use one of these new mix inputs in vMix for the effects row, so we'll have this punching the program row of mix2 in vMix. We'll use the auto as, well, a transition, so fade. Take, what do you think? Uh, T-bar, we'll use that as the T-bar in vMix, makes sense. Then we will use the speed and effects uh, encoders to control the transition speed and the transition selection in vMix. Fade overlay, we'll just have it as overlay one, and take overlay, we will have as overlay two. There's a lot more we could map here. We could use the joysticks with pan tilt zoom cameras, so on and so forth. Bit out of scope of this tutorial, but if you want more information on that, I'll come back and do another video. So let's get started. So once again, we will use jump to control, and I'm just gonna press the first button on the preview row. It jumps to it. And then let's select vMix as our target, and I'm just gonna do set mix preview. Now, I'll just take a moment to show you my vMix project here. It's really simple, I've only got uh, 10 inputs, but we'll map the entire surface. So if we ever add that extra input, we have it. You could, of course, also use layers to double up this, but check out the layers tutorial we made a couple of weeks back. So let's do that. So set mix preview. I'm going to click quick assign as well, so we can do this really quickly. So I'm just going to hit it 12 times. Sorry, 11. Now, now we'll do the same for program. So I'm just going to click program one here. And again, let's just do set mix program and I'm gonna change input number back to one. Add command again, 11 times. Now I'm gonna use the effects row to cut my mix two in vMix. So to do that, we'll again, we'll use set mix program and set input number back to one. But this time I'm gonna set mix to two. And again, we'll add this 11 times and that's done. Now I want to map my auto and take buttons, so I'll come up to here and find them, auto and take. I'm going to select the auto mix command. I'm going to set mix back to one because we want to use them. We want this to affect the main switch in vMix, not one of our mix inputs. Transition number one through four. This is corresponds to these buttons in vMix, the cut, fade, merge, etc. And whatever these buttons are assigned to is what the transition will be. So I'm going to use transition number one. So right now that's fade. So this will be a fade. So let's add that and then take, again, we'll set to mix one and we'll add that. Let's map our fade overlay and take overlay buttons. So I'm gonna press fade overlay. There you go, it finds the control. And I'm just gonna use this to do toggle overlay, toggle overlay one, add that. And then take overlay, I'm just gonna use for uh, overlay number two, add command. Now let's map our T-bar. So if I come over here to faders, you'll see there's just the T-bar. And I'm going to add this set t-bar command to that, done. And then the encoders, I want to use my speed one to set the transition speed. So I'm just going to use that to set the transition speed of number one, which if you remember was the one we mapped to this. So I'll add that. And then effects, I'm just going to use that to do select transition. And that'll I'll use that to select transition one. And that's done. So if we come over to vMix here, you'll see as I start punching across the preview row, we're cutting the preview on vMix. 
If I start punching the live row, we've got control of that. If I bring up my double box effect here, I've actually set the right box of this to be mix two. So if I start punching across the effects row, we're now able to set the source of that with this row. And of course, auto does as I expect, take does as I expect it to do. Great, and you'll see we have full feedback on here. And if I even if I come into vMix and change it, it will follow on here. And of course, everyone's favorite, the T-bar. Never trust anyone who doesn't use this in their show. If I press fade overlay, my lower third will fade up. And then if I press take overlay, overlay two will come up, which in this case, I've got a spinning picture of Martin from vMix. If I come over here to my encoders, I can use the effects one to select my transition. And then I can use the speed one to set the speed of that effect. So I'll turn it right down and then really fast, turn it up. And that's that, it really is that simple. It took me, what, five minutes from installing Central Control to having this up and running. If you have any questions, please email me, joe at centralcontrol.io, or join our Facebook user group. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you soon.